All right, so now uh, let's work on some examples and uh, show how we can find uh, the Nash bargaining uh, solutions. Um, so here's uh, a very simple example. Um, uh, two individuals, two negotiators are trying to uh, share a fixed surplus. Uh, let's consider it as like a cake. And the cake is of size one or the surplus is size one. So this is just a normalization. And uh, <clears throat> if they do not a, make any agreement, well, then the uh, disagreement point is going to bring them zero utility. Okay. Um, well, what about the utilities, uh, the payoffs? Uh, well, for any Y, so Y is kind of the agreement how they're going to share. Um, so it's either zero or one or any number in between. Uh, in the first example, uh, both player one and two are uh, uh, risk neutral. Okay, so player two receives, uh, if, if, if his share is Y, his utility is Y, and player one receives the remaining surplus, which is one, y, one minus Y, and his utility in this case is also one minus Y. In the second example, however, player two or negotiator two is risk averse. Uh, so if he receives share or surplus Y, his utility is squared of Y. However, his opponent is going to receive surplus one minus Y and his utility is still one minus Y in this case. So he's still risk neutral. Okay, so I'm going to apply the Nash bargaining solution or Nash bargaining rule to both of those problems. But before that, let's draw the uh, set S and well D. Well, D in both instances is uh, zero, zero point. Okay, let's call it TD, by the way. Uh, because the set of uh, uh, feasible payoffs will be different in these two problems because the utilities are different. Well, here, how do I draw that? Well, that one is simple because uh, this is player one's utility. This is player two's utility. And as you see, uh, again, Y is going to range from zero to one. So this is the size of the surplus player one gets. Um, so as Y is zero, uh, player one's utility is going to be one and players two utility is going to be zero. Okay, so this is one of the points. However, if y is equal to one, well, then player two's utility is one and player one's utility is zero. Okay, so therefore this is another point. Well, in fact, if you uh, vary y between zero and one, you'll see that the payoffs are going to lie in uh, on this uh, line uh, um, um, uh, uh, u1 plus u2 equals to one line, okay? Um, so this is d, which is zero, zero point. So that's it, this is the um, set of feasible uh, and individual irrational payoff vectors, this triangle, all right? Well, why is that so? Remember, in the bargaining problems, we assume that uh, players can actually um, waste some of the surplus okay so they can they may uh, negotiate and and waste some part of it and so they may actually end up a payoff or utility less than uh, uh you know uh, less than uh, the utilities on this uh, line um, and so therefore interior of this triangle is also part of set s well what about this what about t well Again, drawing it is not so complicated. Uh, once again, y varies between 0 and 1. So if y is equal to 0, once again, second player's utility is 0. The first player's utility is 1. So let's say this is point 0.1. However, if y is equal to 1, again, player 2's utility is 1 and player 1's utility is 0. So this is another point. But are they going to be on a, on a straight line? No, not really. I mean, how you can check that? Well, for example, here, when y is equal to 1 half, okay, say one half, uh, you'll see that one minus y is also one half. Okay. However, here, when y is equal to one half, uh, you know, utility of player one is going to be one half, but the utility of player two, this is one half, let's say, is going to be squared of one half, which is around 0.7, I guess. So somewhere here. Okay. So that means 
the payoffs are not going to be on a straight line, but sort of this way, okay? And again, because they can waste any surplus, uh, anything uh, lower than this boundary is, is, is also feasible. And the D, the disagreement point is again, zero, zero. So therefore this part is T um, and the disagreement point is zero, zero. That's it. Well, very good. Well, the question is, what is the Nash bargaining solution uh, here and here? So if you remember the Nash bargaining solution is in fact X, which is some vector X1 and X2, which is basically argument max where X is in, uh, let's call it X star, okay? So X1 star, X2 star, because I don't want you to confuse with this X and with this X, because this X star is the solution of this problem. So X is coming from this set S itself, because the entire set is individual irrational payoff. Of what? Uh, remember, X1 minus D1 times X2 minus D2, but D1 and D2 are zero. So therefore it's basically X1 times X2, okay? So you're going to maximize this and you know, the X1 and X2 should be coming from uh, uh, this set. Well, this is much like, uh, you know, utility maximization problem, right? X1 and X2, if you draw the uh, level curves, the level curves are, are like these. And at some point, well, because it has a very nice convex shape, at some point it's gonna be a tangent. Um, and in fact, if you solve this maximization problem, you're gonna see that it's gonna be one half, one half. I'm not solving it. I already solved this problem uh, for the buyer seller example, remember. Um, however, uh, the second reason why I don't want to solve it is that Look, this problem, this bargaining problem is symmetric, right? This is one, this is one. So this is a symmetric bargaining. Well, how do I know that? If I draw the 45 degree line, uh, you'll see that uh, this, this, uh, this, this two parts of this set will perfectly overlap on one another. However, this is not a, a perfectly, um, how should I say? This is not a perfectly, uh, 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 I'm sorry, not perfectly, but this is not a symmetric set, okay? Well, I mean, it may look like symmetric, but it is not symmetric. And so uh, here we know that Nash solution is symmetric. So use the symmetry of this bargaining problem uh, because the problem is symmetric, solution must be symmetric. Hence, in fact, X star should be, therefore, one half, one half, okay? No need to solve this maximization problem. But again, if you don't know the symmetry or if you just ignore it or forget it, well, just solve this maximization problem. You should find uh, X star as, as such. What does that mean? That means according to Nash, if these two guys negotiate with each other, uh, they should end up at a payoff vector, one half, one half. How do they get that? Well they get it by choosing y equals one half, okay? So basically they share the cake uh, equally. Well, what about this, however? So this is a bit more complicated problem. Well, uh, the approach is the same, right? Uh, maximize, I'm sorry, the x star is basically arg max x1 times x2 because d is zero, where x is coming from this set t, okay? Well, how do I maximize this or how do I solve this problem? Uh, well, again, this is U1, players one utility, player two's utility. Um, well, I mean, there are two approaches. Once again, as I said, the level curve of this X1 times X2 is going to be tangent to this. This is a strictly con convex uh, set, T. So it is going to be tangent to uh, this line, whatever this is, I mean this curve, I'm sorry, it's not a straight line, this, this curve. And so this point should be the X star, okay? So how can I find it? Well, uh, I need to figure out what this curve is, okay? Uh, how can I do that? Uh, well, kind of simple. How so? Uh, well, here's the thing. Remember, um, 
utility of player two is equal to y one over two, right? So therefore here, I'm going to be choosing x two, right? So instead of x two, I'm sorry, instead of y, just use x two. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry. So x two in this space denotes the payoff of player two. All right, so x2 is u2y, and symmetrically, x1 denotes in this picture the utility of player one, uh, u1 of y, all right? So the question is, how can I relate x1 and x2? If I want to relate, in order to find this uh, curve, I need to relate x1 and x2. In order to relate x1 and x2, well, you can basically, you know, both of them are related to y, just relate them to y, and then you can relate x1 and x2. What do I mean? Well, I mean the following. Look, utility of player one is simple, right? It's one minus y. So therefore, x1 is just one minus y, or equivalently, y is equal to one minus x1. Hmm. So this is how I related x1 with y. Well, utility of player 2, x2, is equal to u2 of y, and y is 1 minus x1. So what is u2 1 minus x1? Uh, well, it is equal to 1 minus x1 uh, to the power 1 half. So that's it. x2 is equal to square root of 1 minus x1. Okay? So this is exactly what this curve is. Remember, this is like x-axis, y-axis. This is x1-axis, this is x2-axis. All right, don't forget that. So this is like x1-axis, this is x2-axis. So this curve is therefore x2 equals square root of 1 minus x1. This uh, sort of curve. So that means this problem is actually the following arg max uh, <clears throat> x2 is equal to square root of 1 minus x1, um, x1 times x2. Well, why I don't care inside this set? Well, because remember, x1 times x2 is an increasing function, so therefore, uh, no, um, the Nash solution is not going to be in the interior, it's going to be on the boundary. Okay. Uh, and also, we know that Nash solution is pretty optimal, so therefore, hence, it cannot be inside this set. How can I find this solution? Well, it basically says maximize x1 times x2 and basically tell me what that x1 and x2 are. Okay, this is why I have this arg. So, you can ignore the arg term. Um, let me open up some space um, and then solve it. So here you go. Um, how do I maximize uh, this function with two variables? Simple, x2 is equal to 1 minus x1. So maximize x1 times x2 such that x2 is equal to square root of 1 minus x1 is in fact equivalent to maximize x1 times uh, uh, square root of 1 minus x1, right? So instead of x2, I just write my constraint. Uh, so this is a function with one variable, which is x1. How do I maximize it? Well, take the first order condition. So let's call this, uh, I don't know, uh, pi. Okay, so del pi del x1 uh, is equal to what? Uh, the derivative of uh, the first term times the second term, one minus x1, plus uh, the first term times the derivative of the second term, which is one half, 1 minus x1 to the power of minus 1 half times the derivative of the interior uh, minus 1. Set it equal to 0 and solve for x1. Uh, well, send this guy to the other side because I have negative here. So I, I'm going to have 1 minus x1 squared, square root equals x1 divided by 2. This is equal to 1 over 1 minus x1 square root. Okay, well, what do I have? Uh, do the cross product. I'm going to have 1 minus x1 square to the power 2. So it's 1 minus x1 equals x1 divided by 2. So send x1 to the other side. 1 equals, I'm going to have 3x1 divided by 2. So you know what? x1 is equal to 2 over 3. 
Okay. Well, what about x1? Uh, I'm sorry, I already found x1. What about x2 then? Well, simple, x2 is equal to this guy, remember? So it's 1 minus 2 over 3 square root. So it's 1 divided by square root of 3. So this is what x2 is. So this point, uh, x1, 2 over 3, and x2 is 1 over square root of 3 is the optimal solution. But in terms of surplus, so this is how much utility each player is gonna get according to Nash bargaining solution. But the question is, what is the surplus they're going to agree on? Okay, so these are not surplus, these are utility values. While the surplus, while finding surplus is easy. Uh, remember, the surplus is denoted by y, so I need to find y. You either use this one, okay, um, or something else, doesn't matter. So let's use this one. Uh, so x1 is equal to 2 over 3, so y is equal to, therefore, uh, 1 minus 2 over 3, which is 1 over 3. So therefore, according to Nash bargaining solution, if these two guys with those utility functions negotiate, the Nash bargaining solution is going to be such that they're going to agree on this surplus, so player two is going to get only one third of the cake. Player two, however, is going to get a bigger portion of the cake, two third. And this is their uh, utilities. Okay. Well, you may wonder why all of a sudden player two is receiving less uh, share. Well, because he's risk averse. So remember risk aversion, he's kind of scared of doing bold moves. And so in the negotiation and or, or in and, and, and or in bargaining environment, risk aversion is basically being scared of being bold in the negotiations. And so uh, risk averse players usually accept, uh, you know, less payoffs or less surplus in comparison to the surpluses they would accept if they were uh, risk neutral players. All right. So this is exactly how we solve the Nash bargaining uh, uh, rule in these two different simple examples.